Hi, and welcome to Wednesday's Meditation with Velda Rose United Methodist Church. Today's theme is Holy Water. We are doing a series on well, holy ground, on spirituality and Christianity that recognizes the importance of creation. And so we've been looking at the creation story and different elements, and today we're looking at water. Today's meditation is a little bit different in that I recorded it this past weekend. In fact, I recorded it in the midst of the solar eclipse. I was camping up near Monument Valley, and the uh, full eclipse passed right over us, and so we watched that eclipse happen, and it was in the midst of the eclipse that I recorded most of today's meditation. That does mean you'll get some background noise from wind. I tried to minimize that as much as possible, um, but you will hear it from time to time, and it may even muffle the sound a little bit, but then again, nature does that, doesn't it? And if we're going to celebrate God's creation, we have to take those things along with that which we love and value because it is part of a package. We have two scriptures today. The first is Proverbs 8. We begin at verse 1. We'll do verses 1 through approximately 3. And then we're going to pick up um, at 12 and continue through the rest of the chapter. Uh, this is in the message, and they don't mark every verse, so that's why I said approximately. Do you hear Lady Wisdom calling? Can you hear Madam Insight raising her voice? She's taken her stand at first and main at the busiest intersection, right in the city square where the traffic is thickest. She shouts, you, I'm talking to all of you, everyone out here on the streets. God sovereignly made me the first, the basic, before he did anything else. I was brought into being a long time ago, well before Earth got its start. I arrived on the scene before ocean, yes, even before springs and rivers and lakes. Before mountains were sculpted and hills took shape, I was already there, newborn. Long before God stretched out Earth's horizon and tended to the minute details of soil and weather and set sky firmly in place, I was there. When he mapped and gave borders to wild ocean, built the vast vault of heaven, and installed the fountains that fed ocean, when he drew a boundary for sea, posted a sign that said no trespassing, and then staked out earth's foundations, I was right there with him, making sure everything fit. Day after day I was there, with my joyful applause, always enjoying his company, delighted with the world of things and creatures happily celebrating the human family. Our second scripture comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 4 through 13, and again, this is from the message. John the baptizer appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins, People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem and, as they confessed their sins, were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit, tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild field honey. As he preached, he said, the real action comes next. The star in this drama to whom I am a mere stagehand will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's Spirit, looking like a dove, came down on him, along with the Spirit of voice. You are my son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. At once this same spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. For forty wilderness days and nights he was tested by Satan. Wild animals were his companions, and angels took care of him. 
And now I hope you will enjoy the meditation that I recorded just outside Monument Valley. Hello, I am recording this from just outside Monument Valley. Here's This week we're talking about water, and I'm recording this um, over the weekend. The sun is still up in the sky, but we are headed for the solar eclipse. It's part of why I'm up here is to see that eclipse. Um, I'm bundled up this way because it's cold and windy, but I thought it would be an appropriate place to record at least some of the meditation this week because. Here in this land that is so marked by color, further down to or towards the edge of the canyon here, we're talking about water this week, and this is a land marked by water, marked by its absence as much as its presence. The desert here is probably some of the most similar to the land that Jesus went into when he went for 40 days into the wilderness. It would have been a very desert-like place. And that land, too, would be marked by the lack of water. The formations behind me were created by water in part, and by when water appears, it creates these deeper gullies. When the rains do come and of course all this dustiness from water not being here and so we have these limited plants and i wanted to share this space with you because this series is about connecting back to the earth connecting back to god's creation here in the earth and so it's important to, to be here continuing to watch that the sun. The first baptisms were done by first century Jews in open bodies of water. That tradition continues in Christianity, and many churches use local bodies of water for special baptism Sundays. I once attended a, a baptism at a United Methodist Church in Pennsylvania. It was Potter County, Pennsylvania, and they baptized in the local a wonder that was not just sprinkles on the head but to actually go into a body of water. A chemistry professor once asked, when we bless the water, does that mean the whole lake is holy? Yes, we ask a special blessing on water used for baptism, but all water is already holy. Consider the parallels of how we experience water and God. As Christians, we understand God most fully as the Trinity all the same substance of divine but with different forms and purposes in the same way h2o has three different forms water as a liquid as ice a solid and as steam a gas water in its various forms has the power to create and destroy it is necessary for life and it makes up most of our bodies and planet as we've continued to try and tame water and bottle it we see a similar desire to box it in and to bottle God for sale. Our relationship with water seems to speak to our relationship with God. As the impacts of human industry continue to pollute our fresh water supplies, there is less and less clean water available to drink. As religion continues to muddy the waters of faith, it can feel as though a pure religion is hard to find. As any Frozen 2 fan knows, water has memory. Nearly 50 years ago, Joni Mitchell wrote, We are stardust, billion-year-old carbon. We are golden, caught in the devil's bargain, and we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. Not surprisingly, astrophysicists have found she was right. Everything on Earth is made up of elements that once made up the stars. And all of our atoms in the world are continually recycled. Atoms are neither destroyed nor created. When a living thing dies, what's left is broken down, and the elements 
and atoms are reused to make into new things and new life. That means the atoms of the air, water, and dirt existed over 2,000 years ago are still in use somewhere in the world today. The atoms that were brought together inside the womb of a young girl to form another human body which housed God's spirit and flesh still exist somewhere in our world today. I had in a, a sermon last year during one of our seasons that the air Jesus breathed, we are breathing. You don't have to go to the Middle East. It, it moves around the planet with the wind, unlike the wind that is buffeting my hood today. And the air moves. And so every breath we take in is a little bit of the breath that Jesus breathed. The good news is that the water that makes up the majority of your body is holy. The water that covers the majority of our earth is holy. It blesses us with every gulp, splash, and drop. Water is all around us and within us, and so is God's presence and blessing every second we carry through the holy waters of baptism. It also brings to mind for me the, the lesson we had this uh, past week about Noah. And the author of the book we're studying, uh, Bible Stories for Grown Ups, makes the point that when God created the earth, there was already water and chaos. And he was holding back the chaos and separating the water and, and bringing up the land, setting the land apart. But it's interesting, isn't it? The creation consisted of pushing back the water, holding it back. And the story of Noah was the releasing of that water to start over. A decreation and a recreation through Noah and his family. Think of how many times water appears in the Bible. From Genesis 1 at creation, we have the Noah story, um, the ark. We have the water that helped the Israelites escape from Egypt. We had the drought that came and brought famine that sent them to Egypt in the first place. We, we have the Israelites complaining about the lack of water so that Moses struck the rock and the water flowed. So many stories where water is of significance. Water is a part of our creation story, part of our understanding of God. And it's interesting to be in this land that I look out over camera. A land where there is no visible water. And yet water has marked it just as water marks us. Octavia Butler. God is change. Seed to tree, tree to forest, rain to river, river to sea, grubs to bees, from many one. Forever uniting, growing, dissolving, forever changing. Bees to swarm, from one to many. The universe is God's self-portrait. The water in our body is just visiting. It was a thunderstorm a week ago. The oceans do not. Most of your cells come and go like morning dew. We are more weather pattern than stone on the earth. Sunlight on mist, summer lighting, your choices outweigh your substance. It's from Jared Anderson, crypto nationalist. What we are doing to the forests of the world is but a mirror reflection of what we are doing to ourselves and to one another. What we are doing to the water of the world is but a mirror reflection of what we are doing to one another. Bottling, polluting, selling, commercializing. May your life be a river. May you flow with the purpose of the one who created and called you, who directs your course and turns you ever toward home. May your way shimmer with the light of Christ, who goes with you, who bears you up, who calls you by name. May you move with the grace of the Spirit, who brooded over the face of the waters at the beginning, and who will gather you in at the end.
I hope you have enjoyed my trip to the desert, to Monument Valley, and my thoughts and readings on holy water. I'm going to include up, oh, no, over here, up here in the corner, um, some pictures of the eclipse so you can see what it looked like at the peak. And I also wanted to give you a few announcements for this coming week. Um, this Sunday, we will be having worship at 9.30. You can join us online or in person on our campus at 5540 East Main Street in Mesa, Arizona. We will be talking about Abraham and Isaac and one of the stories that gives a lot of us pause. And so we're going to talk about where can we go with that story? What can we learn? And then I also want to remind you that next week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is the rummage sale at Velda Rose. It is a huge sale. We can use more volunteers to help it go smoothly, but we also need customers. So do come down. The doors will open at 7 and they are open until 3. Um, food is available there. And of course, just about anything you can imagine buying for your house or anyone or anything in your house. It can all be found at the rummage sale. So with those announcements, I will leave you for this Wednesday. I hope to see you on Sunday and meet you back here next Wednesday. God bless.